Say good afternoon, everybody. Welcome everybody here to the good House of Jacob. Danny. Everybody that's here as well as everybody that's joining us by our live stream and by our conference call. As always, I would like to say welcome to them, and it's good to have you fellowshipping with us here on the Lord's Sabbath. Now, uh, as always, we do what we do on the Lord's Sabbath day, and that is we deal with a convocation, and we deal with a lesson, a topic. And the title of the day's lesson is Signs of the Times. Signs of the Times. The times we're living in, people. That's, that's what this lesson is about. And it is about the signs that's leading up to the coming of the Lord. And the Lord's coming is certain. And we are going to deal with the things that the Lord said would be happening leading up to his coming. Because these are the last days. Make no mistake about it. And we are going to show you that in this lesson. Now, well, we'll just begin the lesson. We'll just start uh, in Second Peter chapter three and we're going to begin reading at verse one second peter chapter three and we'll pick it up at verse one because we're going to just show you some here and then we're going to get into these signs because uh you know people talk about the coming of the lord and oftentimes when they talk about it they talk about it as if the lord might come any day well, let me be clear, the Lord cannot come no any day. But we are living in the days that the Lord's coming is close. I don't mean tomorrow, next week, next year. But it is close. Because the Lord gave us certain signs to let us know when he would make his coming. He didn't give any dates. He just gave signs. And I'm going to start this lesson out here because when you tell people about the coming of the Lord, you get some to scoff at it. But I wanted to show you, first of all, that that's even in line with Scripture. In fact, I had somebody to tell me, I believe, a couple of weeks ago. It may have been more. So I remember somebody telling me that they were speaking to somebody about the coming of the Lord. And they said, what we are about to read here, they said it almost verbatim. But then it have to be. If the Lord didn't call it, it have to be. Let's start reading here at 2 Peter. Begin at chapter 3 and pick it up at verse 1. Okay, go ahead and read. The second epistle, beloved, I will now write unto you, in both which are stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Go ahead. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scuffers, Walking after their own lusts. Now he said that will come in the last days, and these are the last days. And he said they would be scoffers and they would be walking after their own lusts. Scoffer means somebody's mocking. You know, because you probably have talked to some people, talked to some people about the word, and, and, uh, and they start mocking, making fun, in other words. And the Lord is saying here that in the last days the scoffers would come. And this is what they will be saying. Go ahead and read. And saying, uh -huh. where is the promise of his coming? Go ahead. For since the fathers <laughs> fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. See where they said they would be walking after their own lusts. And when they said, and they would be saying, where is the Lord's coming. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things have continued as they were. 
Somebody was telling me that somebody said almost these exact words to them. This was just recently. I said, well, that's just right in line with Scripture. Because they say it all the time. Say, so, you know, ever since I was a little kid, I've been hearing about the Lord supposed to make something coming. You know, my grandfather, he talked about it. Now, here I am. I'm an old man, and I got grandchildren. And you're still talking about the Lord going to make something coming. Well, don't fret. He's going to make his coming. Make no mistake about that. The Lord has appointed a time. And he gave us signs to let us know when that time is near. But keep, continue to read, brother. For this uh -huh. they willingly are ignorant of, mm -hmm. that by the word of God the heavens were of old, uh -huh. and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Now, you know, by the, by the word of God the heaven was of old, the earth standing out of the water, in the water, taking you all the way back to the uh, creation, you know, where the Lord, he uh, created the heavens and the earth, and then he moved the water and set it, all aside, and then the dry land appeared. So now he said, uh, you know, um, um, uh, about times are old, that happened. Go ahead, continue to read. Well, by the world that then was, being overflowed with water, uh -huh. perish. Now the world that then was overflowed with water, it perished. That's talking about the uh, flood that came up on the earth uh, during the days of Noah. Go ahead, continue reading, though. But the heavens and the earth, which are now uh -huh. by the same word, are kept in store. Reserve unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Well, then you know, then then you know, the Lord destroyed all the, the 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 people and the animals and all of that, with the exception of the ones that He took on the uh, ark that He had no to take on the ark. So that is the world that then was after uh, the flood had destroyed what what existed back then. Go ahead, continue to read. But beloved, uh -huh. be not ignorant of this one thing. Now, he says here, beloved, don't be ignorant of this one thing. Go ahead and read on. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, uh -huh. and a thousand years as one day. Go ahead and read. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Now, he said, the Lord ain't slack. He just a set a time. That's right. That's all. He ain't slack. Whatever he said he going to do, that's exactly what he going to do. And he ain't slack concerning his promise. The time that the Lord set. That is the time that he is going to make his coming. At the, you know, he says some men count slackness. Go ahead, continue reading. But his long suffering to uh -huh. usward. See what he said, but he's long suffering to usward. Go ahead and read on. Not willing that any should perish, uh -huh. but that all should come to repentance. So now he said the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. And he's not slack. The time that he's appointed, that's the time that he's going to make his coming, people. Make no mistake about that. That's right. But time with the Lord is a little different than it is at time with man. Go ahead. Uh, now, well, let's go to Mark chapter. Uh, let's go to Mark chapter 13. We're gonna pick it up at verse 28. But you know, you get these people; they scoff at you. You say, "Well, you know, we waiting on the Lord to make His second coming." You say, "Well, man, you know, I've been hearing about this all of my life, and still He ain't made no coming yet." Well, he's going to make his coming at the appointed time, at the exact time that he appointed, and he ain't going to be slack about it either. Let's start reading here in Mark chapter 13. Now, this is when Jesus, uh, we ain't going to deal uh, with, with the real signs right now. We're going to get back to that in a little bit. But first, let's read something here at uh, Mark chapter 13, because the Lord gave us these signs uh, you know, in, in the book of Mark, in the book of John, I mean, and in the book of Luke, and in the book of Matthew, he gave us these signs. So now, but, uh, you know, this is after he had given the signs here. And we're going to just pick it up at verse uh, 28. We're going to get back to the signs a little bit later. But now, pick it up at uh, Mark chapter 13, and began reading at verse 28. 13 and 28. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. Uh -huh. When her branch is yet tender and put her forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. So now, uh, you know, he had named the signs already. We're going to get back and deal with those a little bit later. But then he went on after he had named the sign. He said, learn the parable of the fig tree. When his branch is tender and put her forth his leaves, you know summer is near. This is a sign that summer is near. This ain't got nothing to do with the weather. When you see a fig tree starting to bloom, what is that a sign of? That's a sign that summer is near, isn't it? And he's going to tell you so likewise. 
when you see all of those signs that he had given, when you see those things come to pass, then know that his coming is near. Keep reading. So ye in like manner, uh -huh. when ye shall see these things come to pass, Go ahead. know that it is not even at the doors. And what the Lord is saying here, you know, he ain't going to show up no any day. When all of those signs that he had named, and he had named them, right here in this 13th chapter, we're going to read it from the 24th chapter a little bit later. But right here in this 13th chapter, he had named them. So now he says, so likewise, when you see all of these signs that he has named, know that his coming is near even at the doors. Go ahead, continue to read. Verily I say unto you, Go ahead. that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. And notice what he said, the generation that witnessed these signs that he had named here, it will not pass until all these things be done. When you start to read these signs, you will understand why. I say that we are in the last days. Don't come up with some evidence here as to why I say that. Go ahead, continue reading. Heaven and earth shall pass away, uh -huh. but my words shall not pass away. Go ahead. So the Lord said, now heaven and earth are going to pass, but his words ain't going to pass. In other words, if he said he's going to make his second coming, then he is going to make his second coming. Make no mistake about that. But before he does, all of these signs must come to pass. Every one of them. He said, heaven and earth going to pass. Not one jot of one two going to pass till all these things be fulfilled. Keep reading. But of that day and that hour know of no man. Uh -huh. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Now he said, but of that day and hour, you swear you'll never hear him say anything about some day and hour. And there have been many that have come along down through the years. And they have tried to put a date on it. And every one of them has failed. But he said that day and hour, which we'll never do. You'll never hear us say anything about no day and hour when the Lord's going to come. But we do know that his coming is near. Because we are looking at the signs. Go ahead, read on. Take ye heed. Uh -huh. Watch and pray. Go ahead. For ye know not when the time is. And he said, take heed, but he's telling you to watch and pray. Watch and pray for what? Watch for those signs that he had named. That's what you, before you can watch, you have to know what they are first, don't you? But he said, take ye heed and you watch. And he said, you pray as well. Go ahead, continue to read. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey uh -huh. who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. So now he said the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey. And he did take a far journey. He gave the signs. And not too long after he gave these signs, he took a far journey. Where's the far journey that he took? He went back to the heavens. That was almost 2,000 years ago that he did that. So now he gave the sign, then he took him a far journey. But he's going to return back from that far journey at the appointed time. After all of these signs come to pass, he will return from that far journey. Go ahead, continue to read. Watch ye therefore, uh -huh. for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or uh -huh. in the morning. Go ahead. Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. Now he said when he show up, don't, don't be sleeping. Don't let him catch you napping. In other words, you are supposed to always be ready for his coming. What do I mean by that? You are supposed to conduct yourself at all times as if the Lord might come any day. D.C., come and catch you napping. Because the book says he's going to even come as a thief in the night. If you are not watching, if you're watching, then he ain't going to come as a thief in the night for you. But for those that are not watching, for them he will come as a thief in the night. Go ahead, continue reading. And what I say unto you, uh -huh. I say unto all. Now he said, what I say unto you, I say unto all. Go ahead and read. Watch. Watch. But you got to know what it is you need to watch for. And that's what it is we're going to deal with today. Let's go look at another thing here first. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we're going to pick it up at uh, verse 1. Before we really get to those signs of that, that uh, you know, Jesus' name. 
show you another thing here that, that we probably don't consider. But yet, they are signs too of the Lord's coming. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we'll begin reading at verse 1. 2 Timothy 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 3 and 1. Read on. Incontinent. Uh huh. Fears. Now he said incontinent. Without any self control, in other words. And if you look at these people, it's almost like they're just totally out of control. Just doing stuff. Sometimes they do something you just wonder. What would make anybody do that when you just look at some of the stuff that men are doing nowadays? Go ahead, read on. Fears. Go ahead. Despises of those that are good. See what they said? They fierce, and then they even despise those that are good. When you try to do the right thing, they act like you got a problem. There's something wrong with this man here. He ain't lying, stealing, murdering, committing adultery. Something got to be wrong with him. And it's like they hate you because you are trying to do what's right. But it's all in line with the scripture, people. Despise us of those that are good. Go ahead, continue to read. Traitors. Uh huh. Heady. High minded. Go ahead. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And that seems to be all anybody care about is pleasure. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Go ahead, continue to read. Having a form of godliness, uh -huh. but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. And they even have a form of God because they talk God all the time. But almost nobody does the thing that God says that you are supposed to do. But they talk God all the time. A form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Skip down this last day stuff he said here. Now skip down to, uh, skip down to uh, 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 verse 13. Go ahead and read. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, uh -huh. deceiving and being deceived. So now he's saying that, uh, there will be evil men in these days. And he said they will wax worse and worse. And they will be deceiving, and they will even be deceived. Go ahead, continue to read. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and uh, hast been assured of. Go ahead. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Go ahead and read. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, this is what Paul is, is saying to Timothy, but he was telling him first about the last day, some stuff that would be going on. And then he said, evil men and seducers, they would wax worse and worse, deceiving, and they would be deceived. Go ahead, continue to read. All scripture is given by inspiration of God uh -huh. and is profitable for doctrine. Go ahead. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, that's where real truth comes from. It comes from the Holy Scripture. So if you're not teaching that, if you're not giving them that, then you are among those that are deceivers. But this is what Paul is warning Timothy of. But go on into chapter 4 and pick it up at verse 1. 4 and 1. Go ahead and read. I charge thee therefore before uh -huh. God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Now, now we're, this is about the coming of the Lord here, isn't it? Right. He's going to judge the living and the dead at his appearing and at his kingdom. So when the Lord returns in doing these last days, say he's going to judge the living and the dead at his appearance and at his kingdom. Go ahead, continue to read. Preach the word. Uh huh. Be instant in season. Go ahead. Out of season. Uh huh. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Well, what is what is doctrine? Real doctrine is the word of God. That's real doctrine. So now he said, reprove, rebuke with all long suffering and with doctrine. Go ahead, because he's gonna let you know what they will be doing at this time. Go ahead, continue to read. For the time will come uh -huh. when they will not endure in sound doctrine. Go ahead. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Now how many do you know that really deals with the word of God? They don't deal with sound doctrine. They heap to themselves teaching having itching ears. Because what's sound doctrine? Word of God. I'll tell you what, you give somebody the word of God and watch them reject it. Before you can get it out your mouth good, they're going to reject it. But they will go find somebody that will tell them what they want to hear. That's another sign that we're living in the last days, people. Almost nobody wants to hear the word of God. They got a form of godliness now. They'll show up in church tomorrow in droves. 
But you give them the word of God and watch them reject it. But they will go somewhere and find them a teacher that's going to scratch them ears. Go ahead, keep reading. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And that is exactly what they're doing nowadays. They're turning away their ears from the truth. I don't care how much you read to them. I don't care how much sense it makes. They will turn away from it, and they will turn unto fables. Go ahead, read on. And shall be turned unto fables. Go ahead, read. But watch thou in all things, and do affliction. Uh -huh. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. So now he's just saying, you know, uh, make full proof of your ministry, and nobody does that. But these things that we are dealing with here, these are signs, people, that we are living in the last days here. Because these things are happening just like the Lord is called. Now, let's go uh, Matthew chapter 24, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Matthew chapter 24, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. We're going to just read some of the things that Jesus said. You know, we read the tail end of it in Mark, but now we're going to pick it up from the top. Matthew chapter 24, when they came and asked Jesus what would be the sign of his coming and of the end of the world. Matthew chapter 24, and we're going to begin reading at verse 1, 24 and 1. I want you to understand where we are in this thing, people. It's getting over in the evening time. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 24. And we're going to pick it up in, at verse 1. Ain't a whole lot of things that's left to happen. I'll tell you that right now. Matthew chapter 24 and began reading at verse 1. But it ain't going to happen tomorrow. ain't going to happen next week. ain't going to happen next year. But we are getting nigh. Start reading at Matthew Chapter 24, and began reading at verse 1. 24, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now that temple that they showed him, that was the temple that was built during the days of Ezra and Nehemiah when Israel went back after the Babylonian captivity. And that temple still remained when Jesus made his first coming. Herod, he kind of beautified it some, but that was the temple. And they came and they showed him the building of the temple. And he said, all of these things they will be torn down will not be one stone left upon another that will not be thrown down that's why I know what they got over there what they call a wheel and wall that ain't a part of no temple Jesus said it would not be one stone left upon another that would not be thrown down and it was thrown down in 70 AD then they turned around and they asked him another question go ahead and read on and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, uh -huh. the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Go ahead. Tell us, when shall these things be? Well, they asked him, first of all, when shall these things be? Because he told them about the destruction of that temple that was standing there. Then they asked him another question. Go ahead and read on. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Then they turn around and they ask him, what would be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? Well, the temple got destroyed in 70 A.D. But now, he's going to start to give them signs of his coming and of the end of the world. Keep reading. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Go ahead. Take heed that no man deceive you. Uh -huh. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Well, they're doing that, aren't they? Don't they come declaring that he is a, a Messiah, that he is a Christ, but yet they deceive the people? How do they do that? They come in his name, but they don't give you his doctrine, people. That's deception. His name is not enough. You got to have a doctrine as well. But give him tape. They don't come with Christ's doctrine. Don't bid them God's speed and don't even let them in your house. So now, we're looking at this. They come in his name, saying that he is Christ, but yet they deceive many. Go ahead, continue reading. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Well, don't you hear that nowadays? Every time you look around, Somebody is fighting, or somebody is threatening to fight. United States involved in a couple of little minor wars and threatening to get involved in other wars. And everywhere you look, 
I don't care what hemisphere you look at, somebody is involved in war. And as soon as they think they got that one settled, another one break out somewhere. Why is that? Because it is a sign of the end time. And these are the end times that we're looking at here. Go ahead, read on. See that ye be not troubled. Go ahead. For all these things must come to pass, uh -huh. but the end is not yet. Go ahead, read. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Go ahead. And there shall be fam famines and pestilences and earthquake in diverse places. See what they said? There would be famine. Well, everybody know what famine is. And they have famine. In some countries, they do have famine. And then he said there would be earthquake. Well, you look at earthquake all the time. They had some little minor earthquake somewhere uh, last week. I'm talking about in this country they had one. Just a little shaking a little bit. But nevertheless, it's an earthquake. Then we're going to have pestilence as well. I'm going to read you the definition of pestilence, and you tell me if they're here. Pestilence. Any infectious or contagious epidemic disease that spreads rapidly of... Even, often it says, causing death. Are we looking at any of this stuff? You know, you still got your AIDS going on. They don't even talk about that no more. Now, Ebola got everybody's attention. And I mean everybody's. They scared to let anybody in the country. You got others as well. Stuff that it likely, if you get it, it might be the end for you. But nevertheless, it is a sign of the times, people. You got to quarantine. You get off the plane, first thing you got to do, they got to take you somewhere and quarantine you. Because they scared that you are carrying one of these fatal pestilence. Got all the others, got a lot of others. They don't, they don't talk about as much, uh, uh, but they exist. Go ahead, what, keep reading, what verse are we? Verse eight. Go ahead. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now he said all these things are only the beginning of sorrow. But we are looking at all of this stuff, people. These things are a sign of the time that we are living in the last day. Jesus called it. And if he called it, it's going to be. He said earlier, uh, we read earlier, brother, where he said, heaven and earth may pass away, but not one jot or one two of any of this stuff going to pass away until all be fulfilled. And a generation that see it, that generation would be around at his coming. We are the generation that witnessing these things, people. It ain't never been done like it's being done today. He said they had earthquake many, many, many years ago, not like they have them today. He said they had diseases many years ago, not like they have them today. And famines and all of that stuff. All of these things. He said they're only the beginning of sorrows. Go ahead, keep reading. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted uh -huh. and shall kill you. Mm -hmm. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Go ahead and read. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another uh -huh. and shall hate one another. And then he said many will be offended and they will betray one another and even they will hate one another. And that is even happening nowadays as well. And then he's going to go on to let you know that this message, it's got to go out to everybody. Go ahead, keep reading. And many false prophets shall rise uh -huh. and shall deceive many. And aren't they here in droves? What do you mean they are, they're here in droves? Everywhere you look, you see them, don't you? You just start going in these buildings tomorrow <laughs> and listen to the deception that is going on. And it's deception. Well, how you know it's deception? Because it is contrary to the doctrine of the Bible. That's how I know it's deception. If it ain't in line with the scripture, then it's deception. And you just pick you one. 
wherever you happen to be and walk in and listen to the deception. It is a sign of the time. Go ahead, keep reading. 12. Go ahead and read. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Go ahead. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Well, you know, you come in this thing. But then you got to endure. You got to endure how long? You got to endure until the end. Either until the Lord come or until you die, one or the other. And then if you do that, then you will be saved. But it's some stuff you have to go through. And you have to find a way to endure. And we all got a cross. We got a bath. But you, whatever it is, you got to endure it. And you got to stay focused on what the prize is, people. The prize is eternal life. Mm -hmm. But you got to endure. And he said, the one that endure until the end, that is the one that would be saved. Go ahead and read on. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Go ahead. And then shall the end come. So now in this gospel of the kingdom, it has to be evangelized throughout all of the world. Not that everybody's going to hear it and believe it, but that it will be a witness. And it's being evangelized too. You know, it was a time that it was, I won't say impossible, but maybe somewhat close to, to impossible to evangelize the whole, that's why Paul and, and Peter, all them, every time you look around, they was going somewhere. And Jesus even said before he ascended back to Father, he said, you will not have gone over all the world before the Son of Man come. But now this gospel can be evangelized throughout all the world. In this generation, you can turn on your TV now and get the message if you cross some other way else. And if you flick on your internet, you can get it wherever you are if you got internet. It wasn't that easy many generations ago. Well, not even during my early generation, there was no internet. You know, I couldn't stand up and say, you know, I'm, I'm preaching to you all. I couldn't stand up and say, you know, all oh, y'all just joining us, Bible live stream, a Bible conference call, and welcome. Because you didn't have that then, but now you got it. So this message, it can go out to all the world now as a witness, people. Everybody ain't going to hear it. Don't think they are. I want you to think you're going to run home and tell your loved ones and they're going to greet you with open arms. It don't work like that. But it is a witness that they heard the message. Whether they accepted it or not, they heard it. The message is available. It has not always been that way. What verse are we? We finished 14. Go ahead and read it. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation uh -huh. spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, mm -hmm. whoso readeth, let him understand. Well, this too is a sign, people. You know, when people talk about sign, they think about the wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and all that. These are signs that you are reading about here. This abomination of desolation is a sign of the Lord's coming. And the Lord said, whoever read it, let him understand it. And we're going to deal with this sign a little bit. Because with this one, he said, whoever read it, let him understand this one. And you gonna, if you don't understand it now, you will before you leave out of here today if you just stay with us. What verse are we? 16. Go ahead and read. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. And then he said, when you see it, let those that be in Judea flee in the The Lord is saying these things, people, to this generation. That's who he's saying this stuff to. So you need to understand this stuff. And then he said, when you see this abomination of desolation, flee into the mount. No, nobody, no, no, you don't even know what it is. You don't know where to flee. If you don't know what it is, you're looking right at it and don't even know what you're looking at. It walk up, slap you in the face. You don't even know what you're 
But the Lord said, when you see it, then flee into the mouth. So you got to know what it is, don't you? In order to know when to flee. And you need to know where to flee as well. Keep reading, though. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Mm -hmm. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Uh -huh. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Well, Lord, making this thing, uh, thing sound real urgent. He said, if you're in the field, don't go back. Right. If you're on the housetop, don't go back. He said, flee. That's what he mean. Flee. Go ahead, read on. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, uh -huh. neither on the Sabbath day. Go ahead and read. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, uh -huh. no, nor ever shall be. Well, this is why he's telling you to flee. Because when you see this abomination of desolation, it will begin a period of time known as the great tribulation. That's why he's telling you. That's why he's telling you you need to get moving right away. Right. Right. When you see it, standing in the holy place, get moving. Because it will begin the great tribulation. So the Lord can't come because you ain't had this yet. You ain't had the abomination of desolation. You haven't had the great tribulation yet. So where is this stuff about the Lord might come any day then? You got to have all this stuff. This stuff got to happen before the Lord can come. These are all signs of his coming. Let's go and look at some here. Let's go to... Uh, Go to uh, Daniel chapter 11, and we'll pick it up. No, we don't want to go there yet. Let's go to uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 first. Then we'll get to Daniel chapter 11. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we're going to pick it up. At verse 1. We're looking at all this stuff, people. Even evangelizing. Got people like us. And other people that the Lord have given this word to. Understanding of this word, I mean. They are evangelizing. They are spreading this gospel. Far and wide through TV and the internet and all of that. You got others. They got a message. And they spreading their message far and wide. But they ain't got the gospel. The Lord said a real thing got to go out. When he said gospel, he's talking about the real thing. He ain't talking about that stuff that, that uh, the masses of them called the gospel. He's talking about the real message have to go forth. That's where people like us and other churches that got the real gospel, that's where we come in at. That's why we be scrambling, trying to get on TV here and there and, 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 and the internet and, and, uh, and, and sending brothers from city to city carrying the message. And other camps doing the same thing. The ones that got the real message. Why? Because the message got to go out, people. It is a sign of the times. And it's got to get done. Because the Lord said it must be done, and then shall the end come. So, so the Lord cannot come until the message gets out. And we're going to continue to be among those who's trying to get this message out. Start reading at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Now we beseech you, brethren, uh -huh. by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there you have. That's what we're dealing with, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, aren't we? That's right. He said, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead and read on. And by our gathering together unto him, mm -hmm. that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. You know, Paul is addressing the same issue that we address. That the Lord cannot come no any day now. That's what he's saying. We beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be troubled by anything, as that the day of Christ is at hand. You know, these people that talk about Jesus might come any day now, they need to read this. Because apparently there was some even saying it back then. That's why he had to address the issue here. 
He said, I don't want you to be troubled by anything, by word, by letter, by spirit, by anything as that the day of Christ is at hand. Go ahead, read on. Let no man deceive you by any means. Now, everybody's telling you the same thing. Don't be deceived by any means. Everybody warning you about the deception. You know, Jesus said they would come in his name saying he is the Christ and would deceive many. And he said there would be many false prophets that would arise and would deceive many. And Paul is saying here, don't be deceived by enemies. Go ahead and read on. For that day shall not come. Look what he said here, that day shall not come. Except there come a falling away first. Except there come a falling away first. What is this falling away? Falling away from the truth, people. Falling away from the real word of God. And, and, and almost everybody's gotten away from that. Because what you are getting nowadays that they call the word of God, it ain't even close to the word of God. He been warning you about the deception happening. Well, that's what you're getting. So now, he says again here, I don't want you to be troubled by anything. That day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And what will happen? Go ahead and read. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now the man of sin, that is the one that Jesus called the abomination of desolation here. But he's going to tell you what that man of sin will do. Go ahead and read on. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. See what it says? He's going to oppose and he's going to exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. Go ahead and read on. So that he as God uh -huh. sitteth in the temple of God. Go ahead. Showing himself that he is God. Well, now, so now we got the man here. And he got to sit in a temple. And he got to show himself that he is God. i let you know he got a, a, a temple got to be built for him to sit in. You know, you hear us talk about it. You hear us always watching to try to find out what are they doing about building this temple. Because we know who's going to build the temple. Because we understand the signs. We know where it's going to be built because we understand the signs. And we know once it be built, we know who it is that's going to move in it and exalt himself above all that is called God. That's why all the time we're searching the Internet and we're looking in the newspaper trying to find out when are they going to build this temple. That's one of the few things that we got left to happen. So a temple got to go up. We waiting on it. A man got to move in it. And we know once that temple go up, it ain't going to be that long before he moves in it. Go ahead, read on. Five. Go ahead. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? So now Paul is saying to the people that remember that he had told you these things, just like we are telling you today. And we are saying it to the world, but almost nobody's paying attention except you. You're looking at the thing, and you're waiting on it to happen, and everybody else is scoffing at you, talking about some temple going to be built, some man going to leave somewhere and go sit in the temple and claim himself God, and they think you lost your mind. You got real good sense. <laughs> you got it. Because you understand what the word of God said, and you understand just like Jesus says, it's all going to come to pass. Right. You understand that. So let them keep scoffing. Because they're going to scoff. We read where he said the last day they're going to come That's scoffing, right. didn't they? Right. Saying, where are the days of his coming? I've been hearing about this stuff all my life. He coming, and he ain't going to be slack. And some of them ones that have been scoffing, when he show up, they ain't going to want to see him. Everybody ain't gonna want to see the master when he show up. He gonna end the scoffers. You know what to do for the scoffers. Skip down to uh, 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 verse eight. Go ahead and read. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Now he said, you know, uh, the, the man gonna sit in the temple. He gonna declare himself God. And he said, then that wicked shall be revealed. Go ahead and read. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Go ahead. And shall destroy it with the brightness of his coming. So now the Lord, he's going he to consume him with the spirit of his mouth. And he's going to destroy him with the brightness of his coming. Show you something about the scoffers. Go ahead, read on. Even him 
whose coming is after the working of Satan. Now, when a man show up and exalt himself, and he's going to do all of these signs, but look at what it says here. His coming is after the working of Satan. Go ahead, read on. With all power and signs and lying wonders. With all power and signs and lying wonders. Going to deceive a lot of people by these lying ones. We're going to read a little bit later. He's going to even deceive some into taking the mark of the beast by these lying wonders he's going to be doing. We're going to read that out your Bible. Go ahead, read on. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. He's saying with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Go ahead, read on. And them that perish. Go ahead, read. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. See what I said because they did. Now you try to give it to them, haven't you? That's right. He said, but with all deceivableness and unrighteousness of them that perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. You're trying to give it to them, but they don't want to hear it. They, they busy scoffing. Lord going to deal with the scoffers. Read on. And for this cause, uh -huh. God shall send them strong delusion. See what it said? For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Go ahead and read on. That they should believe a lie. That they should believe. They did not want the truth. And you tried to give it to them. And they busy scoffing at you. But it said, for this cause, God going to send them a strong delusion that they might believe. They chose to believe a lie, didn't they? They're going to turn away their ears from the truth, and they're going to turn on the faith, as we read earlier. Right. And the Lord going to send them a strong delusion that they might believe a lie because they would not receive the love of the truth. Go ahead, read on. That they all might be damned. Go ahead. Who believe not the truth. Go ahead. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. But they all might be damned that did not believe the truth, but rather they had pleasure in unrighteousness. Let's go look at closer at this abomination of desolation, or as Paul called him, the man of sin, the son of perdition. Let's go over to uh, Daniel chapter 11, and we're going to pick it up at uh, verse 31. This is a sign, people. Of the coming of the Lord. That's what it is. A sign of his coming. This abomination of desolation. Or this man of sin. Start reading at Daniel chapter 11 and pick it up at verse uh, uh, 31. Jesus said the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. And let you know Daniel wrote about end time stuff. Everybody want to tell you where well, you know uh, the Old Testament been fulfilled already. Well, why did Jesus take you back to the Old Testament then? That's right. If it's been fulfilled already, and he connected this up to end time, didn't he? He said, that is one of the signs of the time, the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place. Start reading at Daniel 11 and pick it up at verse 31. Go ahead and read. And arms shall stand on his part. And you know, he's going to do a lot of stuff. A lot. He's going to get involved in a lot of wars. He's going to even overthrow some nations. We ain't dealing with it to that extent today. But this man ain't going to be involved in war because he's going to have an army of ten nations behind him. And he's going to overthrow some nations as well because when he get ready to implement his program, he's going to do it by force. And he's going to implement it too. The book is very clear about that. Just keep reading. What verse are we? Middle of 31. Go ahead and read. And they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength uh -huh. and shall take away the daily sacrifice. Go ahead. And they shall place the abomination that make up desolate. Well, now, if you got a temple, and he's going to take away a daily sacrifice. That means they're going to be doing some sacrificing, don't they? That's why we're waiting on the tongue. We know who's going to build it. Edom going to build it. And we know again that they're going to sacrifice animals. Because we understand their, their plan is to build the temple. And they're even training men to be priests in the temple. 
training them how to sacrifice animals. That is a sign of what time we are living in, people. They gonna do this thing. Make no mistake about it. They gonna start again sacrificing the animals. So we are looking at, that's where we are. We are looking at them getting ready for the temple. They gonna build, they've been talking about it for years. But the Lord still ain't slack concerning his promise. Because if I thought he was slack, then I would have gave up a few years ago. Because I know for a few years now they've been talking about building that temple. I would probably just threw in the towel and say, well, they ain't going to build that temple. They've been talking about it too long. No, they haven't. The Lord ain't slack concerning his promise, and some men count slackness. I know if he doesn't call it, it's coming. He made that very clear because he understood that the faith of some might be shaken. You know, we, we like this instant stuff. He going to build a temple. Well, I done waited a week. He ain't built it, so I'm through with this. <laughs> well, Lord got these things in there. Let you know, yeah, I'm going to do it. He went on to tell you. Heaven and earth going to pass. Ain't one child, one child going to pass. They'll all be fulfilled. So your faith don't be shaken if it don't happen instantly. We, we like instant. But it's coming. Did you finish that verse? We finished 31. Skip down to verse 36. Go ahead and read. And the king shall do according to his will. Well, yes, he is a king. That's what this abomination of desolation is or this man of sin is. He is a king and he have a kingdom. And his government, in other words, he have a government that is within a government. And we're going to read a little bit about that a little bit later. But keep reading for now. And he shall exalt himself uh -huh. and magnify himself above every God. Well, that's what Paul said to the Thessalonians, isn't it? He's going to exalt himself. He's going to magnify himself above every God. Go ahead and read on. And shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods. Well, who is the God of gods? The God of gods. That's the true and living God, isn't it? And he said he's going to speak marvelous things against the God of God. When John spoke about him in Re uh, Revelation, John said he's going to speak blasphemous against the God of God. But it says he's going to speak marvelous things against the God of God. Go ahead, read on. And shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. Go ahead. For that that is determined shall be done. Go ahead and read. Neither shall he regard Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, Go ahead. nor the desire of women, Go ahead. nor regard any God, uh -huh. for he shall magnify himself above all. So now he say he's going to magnify himself above every God. Well, that's what we read in Thessalonians, isn't it? Well, maybe that's where Paul got it from, because he said that, you know, he believed in everything that is written in the law and in the prophets, right. didn't he? That's right. Well, this is almost verbatim what he said to the Thessalonians. But I want you to skip down to verse 45. I want to show you where this temple will be. Go ahead and read. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Well, where's the glorious holy mountain? You know where that is? That's Jerusalem. He's going to plant it, it said here, in Jerusalem. Go ahead and read. Yet he shall come to his end, and uh -huh. none shall help him. And yet he's going to come to his end and none say, hey, well, Paul said he would be destroyed with the brightness of the Lord's coming, didn't he? Right. So he's going to be around till the Lord come, but the Lord going to destroy him with the brightness of his coming. He's going to come to his end and ain't nobody going to help him. But he's going to do what he's supposed to do, what the scripture says that he's going to do. Skip down, go on into chapter 12 and pick it up at verse 1 just so we'll understand what time we are dealing with here. 12 and 1. Go ahead and read it. And at that time shall Michael stand up. Go ahead. The great prince which stand for the children of thy people. Uh huh. And there shall be a time of trouble Go ahead. such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. Uh huh. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that should be found written in the book. Well, now, what do you have here? Same time Jesus spoke of, isn't it? And just what he said 
a time of trouble, a great tribulation, he called it, like never before ever again. Well, what time are you dealing with here? You're dealing with the same. You got the man of sin sitting in the temple, and look what it goes right into. Right. goes right into the tribulation. Right. Just like it is written in Matthew, people. Everything lines up, people. This stuff is lining up real good. Lord said, don't wish for that day, and I ain't wishing for it, but it's coming. It's coming. Only thing you can do is give up for it. Be ready. That's right. He said, don't let it catch you sleeping. And I tell you, if you hang around here and if you be asleep, it's because you chose to go to sleep. We're going to make certain that you have the information that you need not to be sleeping. So that they catch you unawares. Go ahead, read on. Verse 2. Read it. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Go ahead. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Well, after the Lord comes, what you going to have? You're going to have a resurrection, aren't you? You're dealing with this stuff, people. My Lord referred you back to Daniel because he got it lined up just like he lined it up in Matthew. Skip down to verse 5 because we're going to just... Show you how long this tribulation comes. You got other people, they teach it. They got most of it messed up. Because I guarantee you, if you find any that supposedly deal with end time prophecy, they all got a seven year tribulation. But look at what the Lord got. Go ahead and read verse 5. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, Go ahead. there stood other two. The one on this side of the bank of the river. Go ahead. And the other on that side of the bank of the river. Go ahead. And one said to the man clothed in linen, uh -huh. which was upon the waters of the river. Go ahead. How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? Well, you know, he done told you about uh, this great time of trouble like never before ever again. And he asked the question, how long will it be until the end of these wonders? He's going to tell you. Go ahead and read on. And I heard the man clothed in linen, Go ahead. which was upon the waters of the river, Go ahead. when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, Go ahead. and swear by him that liveth forever, Go ahead. that it shall be for a time. And it will be for a time. One year. Go ahead and read. Time. Time, two years, three years. Go ahead and read. And a half. And a half a time. Three and a half years. That's how long this tribulation is going to last. Right. Three and one half years, not seven. Because oh, you got some, they teach some things. But the Lord is very clear here that it will be three and one half years. Let's go to uh, Daniel chapter 2. And we're going to pick it up at uh, verse uh, 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 28. We're going to look a little bit at this abomination of desolation. The Lord said, whoever read it, then let him understand it. And then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountain. And don't go back to get nothing, just get moving. You're going to get moving and they going to really think you're crazy then. <laughs> this boy done pulled up and left everything. You know that nice house he bought a few years ago? He done left it. <laughs> and he left two luxury cars in the driveway. So I know, I told you he had lost it. <laughs> you didn't lose it. You're on the verge of gaining it. Start reading in Daniel chapter 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse uh, uh, 28. We're going to start it at verse 28. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had this dream here, and then he saw this great image, and he wanted to know what it meant. None of his wise men could tell him. Finally, he sent for Daniel, one of the captives. Daniel said, I, you know, I can't tell you by my wisdom. He said, but there is a God in heaven that reveals his secrets. He said, I ain't real smart. But there is a God in heaven. He revealed a secret. And he's going to tell Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter day. This end time stuff you're reading about. You're going to take it all the way back to when Nebuchadnezzar had the dream. But he's going to bring it all the way down to latter time. Start reading at verse 28. Go ahead and read. But there is a God in heaven that revealed of secrets. Go ahead. And maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar uh -huh. what shall be in the latter days. See what he said? Make known to Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. So this end time stuff he's going to tell them about here, you know, he's going to take it back 
uh, uh, before end time, but then he's going to bring it all the way down to the very end. Start reading at verse 31. He's going to tell him, first of all, he's going to tell Nebuchadnezzar what the dream was. Then he's going to tell him what the interpretation was. Start reading. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. Go ahead. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, uh -huh. stood before thee, Go and ahead. the form thereof was terrible. Uh -huh. This image's head was of fine gold. Go ahead. His breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, uh -huh. his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Go ahead, read. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, uh -huh. which smote the image upon his feet there were, that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together mm -hmm. and became like the chaff of the summon thrashing floors. Go ahead. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. Mm -hmm. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Now this stone that became a great mountain and filled the entire earth, this represents Jesus at his coming to establish the government or the kingdom of God on this earth that will fill the entire earth. That's what we're waiting on him to come for, people. We're waiting on him to come to establish this government on this earth, and it will fill the entire earth. That is the dream, and now you're going to get the interpretation thereof. Go ahead. Start reading. This is the dream. Go ahead. And we will tell the interpretation thereof before Go ahead, the king. Read. Uh -huh. Thou, O king, art of king of kings. Go ahead. For the God of heaven have given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. Uh -huh. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowl of the, and the, fowl of the heaven Go ahead. have he given into thine hand uh -huh. and have made thee ruler over them all. Go ahead. Thou art this head of gold. Now he said that represents you and your king. Because that's what these, that image represents. Right. It represents world ruling governments. That's right. And the last, that stone, it represented a world ruling government as well. Mm -hmm. But it's going to rule the entire earth, and when it comes, it's going to stand forever. Each one of these, they're going to come and go in their own time. Go ahead, keep reading. And after thee shall arise another kingdom. And then after thee, another kingdom. Well, the first one, he told you what that was, that was Babylon. The one that would come after that was the Medes and the Persians. The Bible said that's how the order that they're going to come in. And history says that, that that is the order that they came in. You think something wrong with this Bible? Don't ever let nobody tell you some man and got this book and messed it up. Right, that's right. How, how some man gonna mess up the word of God? Right. He might tell you some stuff and mess it up in your mind, but the word of God is stands firm, people. They have, for, for, for generations, they have tried to destroy this word. It's still standing. And it's still in order. Don't let nobody take this away from you. Mm -hmm. Don't let nobody take away your crown, people. That's right. Because when they take this from you, then that's what they've done. They've taken away your crown. You got a crown coming. Don't let nobody take it. So now, it came in that order. Then what was next? Go ahead and read. 39. Go ahead. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. And then another kingdom that would be inferior to thee, and that was the Greeks. Go ahead and read on. And another third kingdom. Well, that, well, that was me and the Persian, and then the third kingdom, that was the Greeks. Go ahead and read on. Of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. Go, and then a, another third kingdom that would bear rule over all the earth. Go ahead and read on. And the fourth kingdom. Shall and then there would be a fourth kingdom, and the fourth kingdom, that would be the Roman Empire, and it will be around at the coming of the Lord. Go ahead, right. keep reading. Though. Shall be as strong as iron. Go ahead. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, uh -huh. and this iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. Go ahead, read. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of part is clay and part of iron. So now he said the feet and toes, part of part is clay and part of iron. Well, you know these toes. And how many toes is it on the image? There are ten toes on the image, you understand? So now these toes, they represent ten nations that would make up the Roman Empire. That's what they represent. It is the very last of the Roman Empire. And I'm going to show you they're here today. That's where we are. Start reading. What verse are we? Middle of 41. Go ahead and read it. The kingdom shall be divided. 
but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron. Uh -huh. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with fiery, miry clay. Go ahead, me. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, uh -huh. so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Go ahead, me. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, uh -huh. they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Go ahead, and me. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Well, wait a minute. He said in the days. So what are you dealing with? You're dealing with the last right. of the Roman Empire. And he said in the days of these kings will the God of heaven set up a kingdom. I'm going to show you them kings is here. They're in place. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff is in place, people. That's why I said what I said. Staying a lot further along than some people realize. Keep reading, though. Which shall never be destroyed. He said, but this kingdom, it will never be destroyed. This one, it got destroyed. The Medes and the Persians took it over. And then the Medes and the Persians, they gone. The Greeks, they gone. And Rome is on its way. Because it's going to leave to, he said, well, didn't it leave to in 476 A.D.? No. Everybody says it did. Even history said that it did. But the Bible says in the days of these kings will the God of heaven set up. A, so it can't be gone. That's right. It's got to be around somewhere. And it's around. What verse are we? Middle of 44. Go ahead and read it. Which shall never be destroyed. And it will never, this kingdom that we're waiting to come. Uh, uh, the, the, the kingdom of God, it will never be destroyed, and it will stand forever. Go ahead and read on. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, uh -huh. but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, Go ahead. and it shall stand forever. Go ahead and read. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, uh -huh. and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, uh -huh. the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. Go ahead. And the dream is certain, uh -huh. and the interpretation thereof Even sure. Even the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof is sure. There's some things in your Bible that you cannot understand unless you understand certain history. I know some people don't like history. But there are some things that you will never understand in your Bible if you don't understand some history. I ain't going to weigh you out with it, but I'm going to give you some. So that you will understand what this stuff is that we are reading about. You will even understand what this abomination of desolation here. Let's start reading here. We're going to first read something here from the uh, World Book Encyclopedia, volume 16. And we are going to read uh, from, from uh, uh, page uh, 381. Start reading. Uh, I want you to read what underlined in red here. First thing, uh, the, uh, the, the subtitle is the Roman Empire. Now start reading. Go ahead and read. The boundaries of the Roman Empire changed many times during its 1,300-year history. Uh -huh. In general, however, Rome ruled all the lands around the Mediterranean Sea, Go ahead. which the Romans call Mare Aeternal, uh -huh. Inland Sea, or Mare Nostrum, R C. Go ahead. The Romans ruled the region south and west of the Rhine River and, du and Dunabai River. Uh -huh. The territory included present-day France. Now, he said the territory where they ruled. What was a part of the Roman Empire? He said it included present-day France. Go ahead and read on. Luxembourg. Luxembourg. He just named him here. Go ahead and read on. Portugal. Go ahead. Spain. Uh -huh. Most of England and Wales. Go ahead. And parts of Belgium, Germany, and the Nether Nether Netherlands. Uh -huh. So now you finished reading what was in red there? Yeah. Well, he told you that uh, what was once known as the Roman Empire. Now these nations... They are part of what we call Western Europe nowadays. But they were a part of what was once called the Roman Empire. I'm going to show you something here. Now, uh, uh, start reading. This is an article that was taken from the Encyclopedia uh, Britannica. And uh, 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 we are reading about the European economic community. Uh, 
It is also called the European Common Market, which was once called the Roman Empire. Go ahead and read. EEC, also called Common Market. Go ahead. Economic Association of Western European Countries, established by the Treaty of Rome. In established by what treaty? The Treaty of Rome. Well, where do you, where you got some, some uh, European economic community that they had to establish by the Treaty of Rome? In other words, everybody had to sit down together, all these nations that would be a part of it. They would have to sit down, and they would have to agree to this treaty that was called the Treaty of Rome. Why the Treaty of Rome? Because it is a revival of the Roman Empire. Because people said Rome is gone. Right. But Rome got to be around That's at right. the coming of the Lord. How can it be gone? That's right. It's got to be reestablished. And it started all the way back in 1957. I didn't even know nothing about no word then when they established it. Only thing I knew about was Christmas, Good Friday, and Easter and going to church on Sunday. But here this thing, this thing was starting to, the, the, the work was starting then. Right. The Lord didn't call it way back in the days of Nebuchadnezzar. But the work got started in 1957. Go ahead and read on. To facilitate the removal of barriers to trade among the member nations. Go ahead. The establishment of a single commercial policy toward non-member countries the eventual coordination of transportation systems, uh -huh. agricultural policies, and general economic policies. Go ahead. Did it name some nations there? That's what I want to get to. The original members. Now he said the original members here. Go ahead and read. With France. France. Belgium. Well, that was a part of the uh, Roman Empire. Belgium was a part of the Roman Empire. Go ahead and read. Luxembourg. Luxembourg. That was a part of the Roman Empire. Go ahead and read. The Netherlands. The Netherlands. That was a part. Go ahead and read. Italy. Italy. That was a, definitely a part. And West Germany. And West Germany, that was a part. Did you finish what was on the line in red? In 1973, the United Kingdom, uh -huh. Denmark, and Ireland became members. So now, I'm going to just read you something here. Show you these 10 are in play. Because it's got to be 10. Show you they're in play. I want you to read it. Because you said, well, there's more nations than that. More than 10 in the European common market. No, there are only 10 member nations. And he's going to tell you what they are. Go ahead. Just read, just read what these 10 right here are. What, what it said? Ten member nations. That's what it said. Ten member states. Go ahead, read. Belgium, Go France, ahead. Germany. Greece. All these were part of the Roman Empire. Belgium, France, Germany. Go ahead, read. Italy. Italy. Go ahead, read. Luxembourg. Read. Netherlands. Uh -huh. Portugal. Go ahead. Spain. United Kingdom. Uh huh. So now, if, uh, so this is in place. These ten nations, they are in place, people. That is a sign of the Lord's coming. Because he said in the days of these kings, will God of heaven set up a kingdom? They are in place. Got a lot of stuff in place. We're just waiting on a few other things to happen. But they are in place. That's where we are. Just showing you where we are in this thing. Keeping you mindful as to where we are. Let's go look at another thing here. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Because it was something else that came with this Roman Empire here. Daniel chapter 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Daniel 7, and we began reading at verse 1. 7 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read it. In the first year of Belshazzar, king uh -huh. of Babylon, go ahead and read. Daniel had the dream and visions of his head upon his bed. So now in the first year, you know, Nebuchadnezzar died. Then his son Belshazzar took over. And then in his first year, Daniel had a dream this time. And this is what he saw in his dream. Go ahead and read. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Go ahead. Daniel spake and said, I saw my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. Go ahead. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse from another. Now he said four great beasts. Notice it wasn't three or five or ten. Four. Why four? Because the same thing. He's going to tell you, these beasts represent a king. And you're looking at the ones that it represented. But he's going to bring in something else that we did not get from the second chapter of Daniel. He's going to let you know something else came with this last one here. He didn't tell you about it in the second chapter. Mm. But he's going to tell you in the, in the dream. 
in the dream that Daniel had, the Lord revealed something else that came with that last beast, that last kingdom. Go ahead and read on. The first was like a lion uh -huh. and had eagle's wings. Mm -hmm. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And, and this had to do with Nebuchadnezzar when the Lord uh, put him down on his uh, uh, knees like an ox, and he ate grass for seven years so that he might know that the Most High God ruled up in the kingdom of men. Because Nebuchadnezzar stepped off in his kingdom one day, he said, that's this, this uh, great Babylon that I have built with my hand. Lord said, you're going to eat grass like ox for seven years that you might know that it's the most high that ruled up in the kingdom of men, and he give it to whoever he choose. That's right. And he's given you this great Babylon. Never can lose it. And Newton that too, after he had to eat That's grass right. for seven years. That's right. You read that. That's in your Bible. You can read that in the fifth chapter of uh, 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 fifth, fifth chapter of uh, Daniel. Uh, uh, Daniel. Go ahead and read. Five. And behold, another beast, uh -huh. a second like to a bear, mm -hmm. and it raised up itself on one side. Well, you know, that's the Medes and the Persians. Well, you know who the Medes are today? The Medes that is Russia. That's who it is. And even some even refer to Russia today as being the bear. That's right. Still referred to as right. the bear. And who are the Persians? That is the Iranians. Right. And guess what? They're even allied to this very day. We're going to find out there's some others that's in that alliance as well. But you got the Medes and the Persians. You had them then. You still got them. Even until this very day, they still got this alliance going on even in the very last days. Go ahead. Continue reading. And it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. Uh -huh. And they said thus unto it, Go ahead. Arise, devour much flesh. And then at the appointed time, that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to devour much flesh. They ain't got this alliance with China and all these eastern nations and and where they can come up with an army of, uh, of, uh, of 200 million. And when it's time, that army of 200 million is going to devour a whole lot of flesh. Because it said when it come down across that Euphrates, it's going to be like the garden of Eden uh, before them, and behind them ain't going to be nothing but waste and desolation. Right. Right. And the book talked about something about a third of men being killed. That's a lot of flesh being devoured there, buddy. Mm -hmm. A third of men, that's a whole lot of dead bodies. Go ahead and read on. Six. Read it. After this I beheld, uh -huh. and lo another, like a leopard, Go ahead. which had the pond of the which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. Uh -huh. The beast also had four heads, Go ahead. and dominion was given to it. Now that is a, a Greek empire, but go ahead and read on. After this I saw in the night visions, uh -huh. and behold, the fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, uh -huh. and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. Go ahead. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. And no, it said it was different from all the beasts that was before it, and notice how many horns it had, it had ten. ten. I understand uh, these horns represent Something a little different than the ten toe, but we ain't going to get that, that far into it today. Maybe another time we'll, we'll explain that. But notice you had ten horns it said, didn't it? That's right. Go ahead, keep reading. And then there came up another little horn. Go ahead, read. I considered the horns, uh -huh. and behold, there came up among them another little horn. Go ahead. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And then, you know, these ten horns, they represent rulers. Secular rulers. But then there came up a little, another little horn, and it represented a ruler as well, but it represented a religious ruler because the book says he was different from the first ten. Go ahead, read on. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, uh -huh. and a mouth speaking great things. You know what it said? Eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things, even blasphemous mm -hmm. against the God of heaven. Now, uh, uh, Go on into, well, uh, uh, uh. well, skip down to uh, verse 13. I just want to show you, first of all, this leads up to the coming of the Lord. Verse right. 13. Right. Then we get into the interpretation of what we've been reading about these four beasts here. Verse 13. Go ahead and read. I saw in the night visions, and behold, uh -huh. one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven Go ahead. and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Well, who is the Son of Man? Jesus. Son of Man is Jesus. 
And then he went to the uh, father, and they brought him near before him, and there was given unto him a kingdom. Go ahead and read on. And there was given him dominion Go ahead. and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. Uh -huh. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So all this led up to the coming of the Lord and the establishing of the kingdom of God on this earth. Now let's get uh, the interpretation of of some of this stuff that we have been reading. Verse 17. Go ahead and read. These great beasts, which are four, uh -huh. are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Go ahead. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So now we understand who these great beasts are. There are four kings or four kingdoms that would arise out of the earth. Go ahead and read on. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, uh -huh. which was the verse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devour, break in pieces, and stamp the residue with his feet. And that's the one we really want to know about, because that is the one that will be around at the coming of the Lord. So you need to know something about this one here. Right. But he, say, he said, then I would know the truth of this fourth one. Go ahead and read on. And of the ten horns that were in his head, uh -huh. and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell. Even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. So now, you know, you got this little horn here. Mm -hmm. And it represents a religious government that came with the Roman Empire. You know, go, you, know you hear people talk about sometimes the, the uh, Antichrist. And where he's coming from, you know, every time some fanatic rise up in the Middle East, they always say, well, he, he's the Antichrist. No, he ain't. The Antichrist is coming out of the Roman Empire because the book said that this little horn, and that's what this little horn represents. It represents a religious ruler that came with the Roman Empire, a religious government, and the ruler of that religious government that came with the Roman Empire. What verse are we? 21. Go ahead and read it. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints uh -huh. and prevailed against them. Wait a minute. You mean this horn going to make war with the saints and he's going to even prevail against them? Yes, he is. You know, hear people, this ain't got nothing to do with me yet. It's got everything to do with you. Right. That's right. Think of this stuff read, written in the Old Testament ain't got nothing to do with you. And it was written some 2,000 years ago and ain't got nothing to do with you. got everything to do with you. You are living in the last day. You're going to be a part of this. Look what the Lord said when you see this man move in his temple, flee into the mountains. Because this man, he's going to even make war against the saints, and he say he's going to prevail against them. Now, if you ain't where you're supposed to be, when you are supposed to be there, you're going to have to deal with this. That's right. But you don't need to know. I don't need to know all that stuff. That's what they tell you, because they make it seem as if you don't really need to know nothing about the Bible. Mm -hmm. All you need to know is open your mouth and say, I believe and I'm good. But that ain't what the book said. When Jesus told you about this abomination of desolation, he said, whosoever read it, let it understand it. That's right. And then flee when you see him standing in the holy place. But you don't need to know. I don't need to know all that. Okay? Keep thinking that. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with this. What verse? What verse are we? 22. Go ahead and read. Until the Ancient of Days came, mm -hmm. and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. See what it says? He made war against them and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came. Well, who is the Ancient of Days? That's when the Lord come. And he said judgment was given unto the saints. In other words, they're going to be doing the judging then. And it went on to say as well that the kingdom was given unto the saints of the Most High God. Keep reading. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. Now he's telling you about this fourth beast, because that's the one you need to know about. It will be the fourth kingdom up on earth. Go ahead and read on. Which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, uh -huh. and shall devour the whole earth, Go ahead. and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Uh -huh. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. Go ahead. And another shall rise after them, uh -huh. and he shall be diverse from the first. Go ahead. And, and he shall subdue three kings. Now he said another one will arise. That's a little horn. He's going to be different from the ten. The ten was secular rulers. The little horn is a religious ruler. But he is a king. Make no mistake about that. He got his kingdom. 
but his dominion is far and wide. His kingdom ain't just that little plot of land over there that sits within the city of Rome known as the uh, Vatican City. No, his, his dominion is far and wide. Go ahead, read on. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Go ahead. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. See what they say? He's going to speak great words against the Most High, and he's going to wear out the saints of the Most High. Go ahead, read on. And think to change times and laws. And he's going to think even to change times and laws. He's been doing that down through the generations. The time that you got today, the time that we operate by is not God's time. We operate by a Gregorian calendar. And you know what, who, what a Gregorian calendar is? That means that Pope Gregory gave you that. God gave you a lunar calendar where you go by the, the moon and all of that to determine when the month starts and to determine when the year starts and all of that. And then he didn't change times and he didn't change laws as well. God gave you the seventh day. He said, no, don't do the seventh day. Do the first day. So well, what is he saying about God then? If God says seven and he said one, then what is that? What is, what is that? Change it. He done changed it. That's right. And really, he done blasphemed the God of heaven. Because he done told you, don't do what God said do, do what I said do. That's and they made it low. That's right. And it's going to be enforced. It's been enforced in the past. It's going to be enforced again. Right. Go ahead and read about the Holy Inquisition. We're going to read a little bit about it. Not much, but just a little bit. He read a little bit about it to remind you of what he did in the past. Because it ain't over yet. Ain't no Holy Inquisition. Yes, it is. It's called by something else now. But it's, it's very much alive and well. Because this stuff that we're reading about, it is end time. It is a sign, people, of what days we're living in. What verse are Middle of 25. Go ahead and read it. And they shall be given into his hand until the time and times and the dividing of time. And they will be given into his hand until the time and times and the dividing of time. Three and one half years. Keep reading. But the judgment shall sit. Go ahead. And they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. Go ahead. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Now the judgment going to sit and they're going to take away his dominion to consume and to destroy. Well, who's going to do this? The Lord going to do it at his coming, people. Until that time, he's going to have his power. And he's going to exercise it, too. Make no mistake about that. This real stuff you dealing with here. Mm -hmm. I know you like to hear the nice, soft, smooth stuff, but that ain't the word of God. You got to get it right. You got to get it straight. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, people like smooth stuff. Tell me something nice. Oh, Lord, love everybody. Ain't nothing going to happen. He's going to come get me, take me to heaven. Everything going to be wonderful. That's what you want to hear. Ain't that what they all of them are there? Fables. Seek that them self teachers have an itch and ear. Turn away their ears from the truth and turn on the fables. You want a fable? Something smooth. What verse are we? End of 27. Go ahead and read it. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, uh -huh. and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Go ahead. Hitherto is the end of the matter. Well, that is good. That is good. So now, he said a kingdom was given unto the saints. That's what this is about. The Lord given unto you the, king, uh, the kingdom along with everlasting life. If the kingdom is going to stand forever and you're going to rule in the kingdom forever, that means you got to be around forever, don't you? That's right. That's right. Let's go to uh, Revelation chapter 13. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Show you what would happen to the Roman Empire. Because everybody say it's gone. And sort of, but not really. Revelation chapter 13, we're going to begin reading at verse 1, 13 and 1. The Lord told you what the, uh, uh, the man would be doing. He would be doing these great signs and wonders. But he said he would be doing it by the hand of Satan. Go everybody look at him 
and everybody think he's so pious. They don't understand that he's saints, man. He ain't God's, man. He's saints, man. But he's the great imitator. Start reading at 13. Pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read it. And I stood upon the sand of the sea mm -hmm. and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Go ahead. Having seven heads and ten horns. Well, now you have the same beast that Daniel told you about. But he said the beast rose up out of the sea and he had seven heads and ten horns. And he's dealing with the last one here. Go ahead and read on. And upon his horns, ten crowns. Uh -huh. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. See what it said, the name of blasphemy. Because he blasphemed the God of heaven all the time. God of heaven said one thing, he said it did, something opposite. In other words, don't, don't, don't bother believing what the God of heaven said. Believe what I tell you. Right. right. In other words, that's blasphemy. I tell you, don't believe what the God of heaven said. That's blasphemy, that's right. people. That's right. And that's what he has done. Down through the generations. And still doing it even unto this very day. If you don't understand that, you need to just read a little bit of the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church. Well, I just told you some of it. God said seven, he said one. God said coming to the earth, he said going to heaven. And it goes on and on. God said three days and three nights. He said, no, a day and a half. <laughs> so in other words, now you're blaspheming God of heaven because you don't really say what the God of heaven said. It ain't right. Start reading wherever we uh, left off at. Verse 2. Go ahead and read. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, uh -huh. and his feet were as the feet of a bear. And his mouth is the mouth of a lion. Go ahead. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Well, who is the dragon? That's Satan, isn't it? That's right. And well, didn't it say uh, in Thessalonians that he's going to do these lying wonders by Satan? Well, that's why he got his power, seat, and great authority from. The devil gave it to him. Go ahead and read on. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And then he said, I saw one of his heads as it was wounded unto death. Go ahead and read on. And his deadly wound was healed. And his deadly wound was here. Go ahead and read on. And all the world wondered after the beast. And all of the world wondered after the beast. I'm going to show you what happened with Rome. This is an article taken from Un uh, Universal Standard Encyclopedia, Volume 20. If you ain't got this, you can read it in uh, pretty much any encyclopedia. Start reading uh, Republic of Rome. Start reading right there. What's circle there in, in uh, All right. red. Go ahead and read it. The last Western Roman emperor, uh -huh. Romulus Augustus, 475 to 76 AD. Now this was the last one. 475, 476 AD, and supposedly this was the fall of the Roman Empire, 476 AD. So now we're talking about how many years? 1,600 years or so ago, or 1,700 years ago. Go ahead and read was overthrown by the barbarian Osider, uh -huh. who was proclaimed king of Italy by his troops. The he was among those three horns that was plucked up by the roots. One day we'll name the other two. Go ahead and read. The history of Rome then the history of Rome then merged with that of the papacy. See what it said, the history of Rome. You know, after 476 AD, it said the history of Rome it merged with the papacy, and I'm going to show you what the papacy is in a little bit, but go ahead and read. The Holy Roman Empire, the Papal States, and Italy. Now, I want you to read uh, 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 papacy. This is taken from the American People Encyclopedia. I want you to read that, then I want you to turn over and read on the other side. Go ahead and read. The papacy. Uh-huh. The term papacy designates the office of the Pope. That's what papacy, because it said Rome merged with the papacy. And what is the papacy? It is the office of the Holy uh, of the Roman Empire, of the Pope. Go ahead and read. The Bishop of Rome. The Bishop of Rome. It's the head of the Catholic Church. Uh -huh. The word Pope comes from the Greek term for father. Now it comes from the Greek, and that's another thing too. Mm -hmm. He called himself father. That's right. Jesus said don't call no man father. That's right. 
He done even took it uh, beyond that. He even calls himself holy father. That ain't blaspheming what is. That's right. I, I, I want you to read. Uh, well, I started to read that, but I ain't going to read that. Just read down here, Pastor. Okay. There's some stuff up there I really want to read, but go ahead and just read, just read down there. All right. Go the, ahead. The papacy. Uh huh. The system of government of the Roman Catholic Church. Wait a minute. So it is a government. Right. Remember, with, you know, you had the ten horns, and then with that came this little horn. And that is what this little horn represents. It represents the, the system of government of the Roman Catholic Church and the one that heads that government. Go ahead, read on. With the Pope as supreme head is called the papacy. Uh -huh. The word papacy also refers to the office of the Pope. Uh -huh. The congregations, tribunals, and offices in Rome through which the Pope governs the church uh -huh. make up the curia. Go ahead. The Pope's seat of authority is in Rome. It's where? Is in Rome. It's in Rome. Go ahead and read on. It is called the Apostolic See or the Holy See. Uh -huh. The Pope lives in the Vatican Palace located in the independent state of Vatican City. Oh, you got a city within a city. Right. A government within a... You got the Roman... Uh, you, you got Rome. It's a part of the Italian government. Right. But then you got another government that sits within Rome. It is called the Vatican City. And he is the king of that government. That's why the book calls him a king, people. That's right. His dominion is far and wide. But he got this little state here. And he got his own government within that little area that is called Vatican City. Go ahead, read on. Vatican City lies within the city of Rome. Uh-huh. Did you finish that? That's it. That is good. Now, show you something. I'll show you why you had this merger. Read this. Yeah, we got, I told you we got to read a little bit, people. That's why you, this is Universal Standard Encyclopedia, volume 12. All this stuff. When you understand this, then you can understand about what you read. When you read about these beasts and, and, and all of that stuff. But if you don't have this, you never understand. You, you, if you don't have this, you'll never understand this. Because you wonder why we said what we said. Well, this is why we said what we said, because we did the research. So when we give you this information, it is the information that you need in order to understand certain things in your Bible. Because you go read your Bible. I don't see nothing about no Pope in the Bible. No, you don't. But that's who you're reading about. But until you do your research, you don't understand who you're reading about. And when Jesus told you, when you see him, understand what you read. Have to, you have to do some, some homework to understand sometimes what you read. It's good to read, but it's better to understand what you read. That's right. Well, I read that. Did you understand it? Well, <laughs> you didn't accomplish a lot then, did you? Go ahead. Start reading that. The establishment of the Holy Roman Empire Go ahead. represented as the original Stalin implies uh -huh. an attempt to resuscitate the Western Roman em Empire. Wait a minute, he said uh, uh, the establishment of the Holy Roman Empire. That's First right. it was just Rome. Then when they did the merger, when, the, when it merged with the papacy, the religious part of Rome, it became the Holy Roman Empire now. And they did that to resuscitate. You know what resuscitate means? To bring back the life. Well, if it's got to be brought back to life, that means at some point it died, didn't it? Well, didn't we read in Revelation, I saw one of his heads as it was wounded unto death, and the deadly wound was healed. Yeah. Deadly wound ain't been healed yet, but they working on it, buddy. That's right. They working big time. That's it's right. almost healed. But That's right. <laughs> You got this part of it. They just haven't really completely come together yet with the religious part of it. Because once it does, then you're going to have two governments and a ruler 
ruling each one of those governments. You're going to have a secular government, and you will have the religious government as well. I'm going to show you that. But he said they came together. They merged in order that they might resuscitate, bring it back to life, in other words. Because it's got to be around. If, if, if it was supposed to have gone in 476 A.D., and the Lord says it's got to be around and it's coming, well, it's got to get back some kind of way. It's got to be there, don't it? That's right. The word of God going to stand, people, just like it's written. That's right. Ain't going to get changed. Well, you know, it died 476 A.D., so now we got to come up with something new. No. It's going to be the same thing. It's going to be that same old Roman Empire with a slightly different look. And I'm going to show you about that. Go ahead, read on. An attempt to resuscitate the Western Roman Empire, uh -huh. which had collapsed in 476. Go ahead. The That's Ro when it died. One of the heads as it was wounded unto death. And the daily wound was here. We waiting on it to get here. Go ahead, read. Throughout the turbulent period known in history as the Dark Ages uh -huh. that followed the removal of Romulus Augustus uh -huh. from the Western throne by Osasa, uh -huh. the traditional concept of a temporal realm Co coextensive with the spiritual dominions. Wait, with a temporal realm, yeah, that's right. secular government. That's right. With a with a what with a spiritual realm. So that means you got a secular government and you got a religious government as well. And I'm gonna tell you which one gonna be calling the shots. The religious government, that's the one that's gonna call All the shots. Shot. He's gonna tell the second government, you go do this. You see his head there, I want you to go take it off. Okay. That's what they did under the Holy Inquisition. You had a tribunal of religious courts. They made the judgment as to what should be done to heretics. You know who heretics are? In the eyes of the Catholic Church, we are heretics. In the eyes of God, Everybody that walks contrary to the word of God is a heretic. But in the eyes of the Roman Catholic Church, everybody that walks contrary to the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church is a heretic. And you need to be punished. Mm -hmm. What verse are we? Where are we at, brother? The traditional concept of a temporal realm coextensive with the spiritual dominions of the church mm -hmm. had been kept alive by the bishops of Rome, later referred to as the popes. Now, so, you know, they kind of kept it, kind of kept the uh, Roman Empire going. The spiritual realm of it. Let's see here. I got something else here. Give me a second. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. Okay, we got that. Now, let's uh, let's go to uh, uh, Revelations chapter. No, that ain't what I want. I want to go to this. Let's go to Revelation 13, y'all. Pick it up at uh, verse 4. Back to Revelation 13. We get to this a little further down the line. Revelation 13. And we began reading at verse 4. Back to Revelation 13. And we're going to pick it up at... Uh, Verse 4, I saw one of his heads is wounded unto death, daily wounds healed, and all of the world wandered after the beast. Start reading at verse 4. Go ahead, read. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. Go ahead. And they worshipped the beast, saying. Now, when you worship the doctrine that was given to them by the dragon, then you worshiping the dragon. That's right. You know you're dealing with satanic worship when you did. You, you would be hard, con, uh, hard pressed to convince anybody that you are dealing with the doctrine of devils 
when you deal with that doctrine that they have given you. Go ahead, keep reading. And they worshiped the beast, saying, uh -huh. Who was likened to the beast? Go ahead. Who was able to make war with them? Go ahead, me. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. If you doubt that I knew what I was talking about when I said three and one half year, tell me how long is forty and two months then? You know, we don't make up stuff around here. So now, you got it here. You got him here. He's a part of this great revelation that is three and one half years. Keep reading. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God uh -huh. to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Go ahead and read. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Well, that's what we read in Daniel chapter 7, isn't it? Right. That was given unto him to make war with the saints. You're reading about the same one. You're reading about the last one that made war with the saints. Go ahead, read on. And to overcome them. Go ahead. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. I told you his... His dominion is far and wide. He got this little, this little plot over there. It ain't but a few acres. But it is a government. And he is the king of that government. But it said, but unto him was given dominion over all kindreds and tongues and nations. He had power over all of them. But don't think, because you ain't sitting over there next to him in that little plot of land over there in Vatican City, that he ain't going to have some authority. His authority, like I've been saying, is far and wide. What, what, did, did you finish that? We finished Skip seven. down to uh, 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 verse, uh, verse 11. Come and show you. It was just the Roman Empire. But when that deadly wound is healed, this is the look that it will have. Start reading at verse 11. Go ahead and read. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Go ahead. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Go ahead. And he exercised of all the power of the first beast before him. So now he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. These horns mean rulers. At, at, before the merger took place, you had just one ruler. He was the Caesar or whatever he may have been called, the emperor whatever. Then after the merger, you had two rulers. You had the religious ruler and you had the secular ruler. And when this daily wound is healed, that is what you are going to have in these last days. Go ahead, continue. That's why I said two horns like a lamb, but notice what it said, he spoke as a dragon. That's right. Because what he was saying was the same doctrine that had been right. given unto him right. by the dragon. That's right. Go ahead and read on. Middle of 12. Read it. And caused of the earth and them that, and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose daily wound, deadly wound was healed. And it caused the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast. You know all this stuff that you be, be worshiping that you call Christianity? You know where it came from? It came from Rome. Some of it they didn't just repackage it mm -hmm. and gave it to you. Instead of calling it Centralia, we'll call it Christmas. But that was what the first beast gave you. So when you do it, you're doing the stuff that was given unto you by the first beast. Keep reading. 13. Go ahead and read. And he doeth great wonders, so that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. He doeth great wonders, it said. So that he make fire come down from heaven in the sight of me. Well, we read earlier over in Thessalonians that he was going to do these great wonders. And he was going to deceive the people by these great wonders. And I'm going to show you. He's going to even deceive some and cause them to accept the mark of the beast. Did you finish that verse? I finished 13. Well, let's go over to, uh, so we'll understand who this is that we're reading about. Let's go to Revelation chapter 19. We're going to pick it up at verse 11. Revelation chapter 19, you're going to begin reading at verse 11. This is his coming here. And now you had one that did these great wonders that deceived the people by those men. I'm going to show you, this was the religious head of this Roman Empire. 
Because you had to. One is referred to as the beast. Other referred to as the false prophet. Start reading at 19 and 11. Go ahead and read. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Go ahead. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Uh -huh. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Go ahead. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Uh -huh. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Go ahead. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Go ahead, me. And the armies which were in heaven follows him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Uh -huh. And out of his mouth goeth, goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Go ahead. And he have on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. King of kings and Lord of lords. If you haven't figured it out by now, this is Jesus at his second coming. But I'm going to show you what it is that he's going to do with these two rulers that we just read about, them two horns right. that we read about over in the 13th chapter. Start, uh, start reading at verse 19. Go ahead and read. And I saw the beast uh -huh. and the kings of the earth. He said, I saw the beast and the kings of the earth. So you know, now this is a secular ruler here. And who are the kings of the earth that is with him? It is those ten nations. That he will have authority over. He said, I saw the beast and the kings of the earth. Go ahead and read on. And their armies. And their armies. Go ahead and read. Gathered together to make war with him that sat on the horse and against his army. And gathered together to make war against the Lord, in other words, and his army. Go ahead and read on. And the beast was taken. And the beast was taken. Go ahead and read. And with him the false prophet. Well, who is the beast? That is the second rule. That's right. Well, who is the false prophet? That is the religious rule. Right. These are the two horns here That's that right. we read about. That's right. He said, I saw another. Then he said, I saw another beast. That's right. And it had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke as a dragon. And it caused the earth to worship the first beast that was wounded by the sword and did live. Well, Rome never ruled by the sword, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. But it, then it, it did live, didn't it? Because it was resurrected. It had to be resurrected in order to be around at the coming of the Lord. And this is what the Lord did with him. Go ahead and read on. That wrought miracles before him. Go ahead. With which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. Go ahead. And them that worshipped his image. Uh -huh. These both was cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Well, Paul said the Lord was going to destroy him with the brightness of his coming, didn't he? And Daniel wrote that he would come to his end and none would help him. Well, here you have it. This is what's going to happen to him. Lord going to put them both in the fire. We ain't done. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Revelation chapter 17. And we'll pick it up at verse 1. Revelation 17. And we'll begin reading at verse 1. 17 and 1. Seventeen and one. Now, uh, you know, in, in the uh, in the uh, 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 seventh chapter of Daniel, it was, he was referred to as the little horn. In the seventeenth chapter of Revelation, that government and the head of that government is referred to as the great whore that sitteth up on many waters. That even has some daughters. I've told you before who the daughters are. You know who they are. In case you say, well, I ain't Catholic. Okay. Well, you one of the daughters then. <laughs> Start reading at 17 and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. And there came one of the seven angels, uh -huh. which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, uh -huh. come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Go ahead. Now the waters represent peoples and nations and multitudes and tongues. And the whore represents that great city that reigns over the kings of the earth. It says that in this interpretation that it gives you here, but we ain't going to bother reading all of that. Go ahead and read on. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Go ahead. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And the, and the reason the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication is because she had a doctrine that she has given unto the world. And when you drink out of that cup in which that doctrine is in, then you are drinking bad doctrine. And the Lord said they have been made drunk 
by the wine of her fornication. Go ahead and read on. So he carried me away in the spirit into uh -huh. the wilderness. Go ahead and read. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast uh -huh. full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead and read. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, uh -huh. having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Well, they're going to drink of it tomorrow big time. Whatever you might think of it. Well, it ain't that bad. Well, Lord says filthy. Mm -hmm. Now, if God says filthy, it's filthy. It's filthy. That's right. Well, I don't see nothing wrong with it. Right. But you get these people, they want to justify right. this stuff. That's right. First of all, the stuff came from Satan, number one. That's right. So it can't be good. That's right. And then the Lord turns around, and he called it the filthiness of a fornication. That's what God called it. What verse are we? Five. Go ahead. And upon her forehead was a name written, uh -huh. Mystery, Babylon the Great. Go ahead. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Well, the daughter's got the same old stuff that she got. That's where they got it from. See, well, I ain't Catholic. Well, you, you one of the daughters. And you got the same old stuff that your mama had. Go ahead and read. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints uh -huh. and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So now he said, I saw this woman. She was drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs. Do you know what martyr is? One that died uh, 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 for, uh, for the sake of one's belief. That's what a martyr is. In other words, you hold on to the word of God regardless. Even, even if it costs you your life. You hold on to it. That's a martyr. And he said, I saw this woman, and she was drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs. Because there's going to be some more martyrs. Don't think it ain't. Right. I'm going to read you about some in the past, and this thing going to be around yet future. Start reading right here. It's called, woman just called the Inquisition. They called it the Holy Inquisition, but wasn't nothing holy about it. Go ahead and read. System, the Inquisition. Uh -huh. System of tribunals. Formerly existing in the Roman Catholic Church. Formerly, you know, this part of their history, they don't like to, they don't like to talk about this too much. Go ahead and read. For the discovery, repression, and punishment of heresy. See, what it was set up for the tribunal that was set up for the discovery. First find out who they are. Then for the punishments of heresies, heretics. That's what it was set up for. That's right. We're going to search you out, find out who you are. Then we're going to punish you. That is what they did. Go ahead and read on. After Christianity became the established religion of the Roman Empire. After Roman Christianity. Let's get it straight, okay? I, I don't. Roman, because they came up with their brand of Christianity. Right. Which was really the doctrine of Satan. Because they weren't dealing with the doctrine of God. They were dealing with the dog. That's why I read you what I read you. The dragon gave him his power, seat, and great authority. He's going to do signs and wonders by the dragon. Go ahead and read on. Heresy was regarded as both a civil and a religious crime. Go ahead. And heretics were punished by the secular courts, no special ecclesiastical bodies. So now he said, you know, they were. it was a secular crime. It was a religious crime as well. And you were punished by the secular courts. But it was the religious courts that they set up that made the determination as to whether or not you should be punished, whether or not you were a heretic or not. Go ahead, key read. When found guilty of heresy and rebellious of obstinate, when found guilty of heresy and rebellious or obstinate in his belief, mm -hmm. the heretic was yielded to the civil courts for punishment. See what they said, they yielded it over to the civil courts. And the civil courts, they would carry out the punishment. The, the religious courts, they would decide whether or not you were a heretic. Right. And then they would hand you over to the civil courts for punishment. Go ahead, keep reading. Let me read that. Yes, sir, I want you to read that absolutely because people think, hey, well, the Inquisition is gone. No, right. it ain't. Right. This is what they call it today. Go ahead and read. After Vatican Council II, mm -hmm. see under Vatican Councils. Go ahead. The name of the organization was changed to Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. And I put some dates around that. 
That's 1962 and 1965. That's when they changed. And it still exists today, but they don't call it Inquisition anymore. That's what they call it today. Not this pope that's in office now, but the pope that was before him, he was the head of this that's organization. Right. That's right. So we talking about just a few years ago. That's right. So the, the, the organization, it still exists. The Inquisition, it still exists. We ain't going to call it Inquisition no more. Now we're going to call it the doctrine of the faith or the whatever. And they're going to do the same thing that they did in the past. I just had to read this article. I, I know I read it to you before, but I had to read you a little bit of it anyway. Now this, happened, this article was published in 1998. But it said, I want you to read the, the headline, and then I want you to read just what's on the line and read. Go ahead and read. Vatican's open secret archives to scholars' inquisitions. See what it said? The Vatican opens up secret archives into scholars' inquisition. You know, they got some stuff under that Vatican City. I don't know if you um, I've watched this program not too long ago. They got some stuff under that Vatican City, boy, that, that if Probably, if, if we could get to that and read that stuff, probably just blow our mind. Mm -hmm. They got a library around today. Mm -hmm. I forget how many copies of books and stuff they said they got, but it was some astronomical amount. So they got some valuable information under there. But now, so now he said, uh, you know, they opened up some secret archives. You know, stuff they, they've been had... Uh, that, that they've been keeping, keeping secret and they finally decide to uh, open up some of them. Go ahead, start reading. Rome. Uh -huh. The Vatican permitted scrutiny of one of the most notorious periods in Roman Catholic Church history. Thursday. And that's talking about the Inquisition. Go ahead and read. Opening up the archives of the department, once known as the Inquisition, uh -huh. and showing that even the Bible was once blacklisted. Wait a minute. You couldn't even read the Bible? You didn't know that, did you? They had it so that you couldn't even read the Bible. If you got caught reading the Bible, you was a heretic. Right. We need to do something to you. Keep reading. Open Thursday alongside the Inquisition archives was the infamous index of forbidden books, which Roman Catholics were forbidden to read or possess on, on pain of excommunication. See what it said, you know, it, that forbidden books that they could not read on pain of excommunication. In other words, you get caught reading this stuff, we throwing you out of church, man. Right. Right. Gonna tell you what some of this stuff was. Go ahead and read on. They showed that even the Bible was once on the blacklist. Uh -huh. Translations of the Bible ended up on the bonfires along with other heritage. They did what? They burned the scripture. That's right. Now, wait a minute. I thought they were so pious. First of all, you can't read it. Get caught reading it. We're going to excommunicate you. Right. Then what we're going to do is try to make sure you don't get hands on it to read it. We'll just burn them. Keep reading. Along with other heretical works because the church. And other, and, uh, along with other works that they considered heretical works. You get a book. Some guy that's got it right. He done sat down and he done wrote a book. And everything he done wrote is right. That's heretical. Mm -hmm. Can't do that. You got to burn it too. That's right. Go ahead and read. Whose official language was Latin was suspicious of allowing the faithful access to sacred texts without ecclesiastical guidance. In other words, don't, don't you bother trying to read no Bible. You just keep your mouth shut and keep your ears open. We'll tell you what you need to know. See there? Can't, can't do like we're doing today. Right. That's right. I'm sitting up here right. reading from the Bible. You sitting out there following along in the Bible. Can't do that. Don't read no Bible. We're going to tell you what it is that you need to know. Where, where, where are we? Right here. Keep reading. The Inquisition was established by Pope Gregory VI mm -hmm. 
in 1233 as a special court to help curb the influence of heresy. It escalated as church officials began to count on civil authorities to fine, imprison, and even torture heretics. That's what they did. It ain't over. It's the end time stuff you're reading about here, people. You know, stuff that they're going to do. It's the end time stuff you read. I know you don't want to hear it, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. That's right. It might be some motivation for you to get it together. So this is what you wind up maybe having to deal with. Well, go back to uh, 17 and pick it up at uh, verse 6 and keep reading. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints uh -huh. and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Go ahead. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Uh -huh. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? Go ahead. I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which have the seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. Go ahead. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And they're going to wonder when they, when they behold the beast that was, wrong was. Right. And now it is not, but yet is. Oh, this one's got to be resuscitated. That's right. That's right. It's got to come back. It's got to be there, don't it? That's right. The Lord said in the days of these kings will the God of heaven. So it's got to be there. That's right. So it was, it's not, but it is. It's coming. It's coming up out that bottomless pit, and when it does, it's going into perdition. You know what perdition is? Destruction. The wife going to wonder, where did this thing come from? Mm -hmm. Lord done told you about it. Should have been reading your Bible. You would have known. That's right. Keep reading. Verse 9. Go ahead and read. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. Uh -huh. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Go ahead and read. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. Uh -huh. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Go ahead and read. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, mm -hmm. and is of the seven and go off into perdition. Go ahead, read. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. And who are, who are the ten horns? I told you who they were. They're the same as the ten toes that we read about in Daniel chapter 2. That's right. The ten horns are ten kingdoms that shall receive power one hour with the beast. Go ahead and read on. These have one mind. Go ahead. And shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Go ahead. These shall make war with the lamb, uh -huh. and the lamb shall overcome them. See what it said? He's going to make war with the lamb, and the lamb going to overcome them. Go ahead and read on. For he is the Lord of lords mm -hmm. and king of kings. Go ahead. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Now, let's go over to, uh, I'm just about done. I skipped a couple, but uh, that's okay. You got the message. Let's go to Revelation chapter, no, let's go, not go there. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. And we're going to pick it up at verse 21. Matthew 24, and we'll pick it up at verse 21 because you got two more after this one. 24 and 21. So remember, this is where Jesus gave you the signs of his coming. You know, he told you about the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place that would begin the great tribulation. And now we're going to find out that the Lord will not come until after the tribulation is all over with. But start reading at Matthew 24 and began reading at verse 21. We're going to pick it right up where we left off in this uh, 24th chapter of Matthew. Go ahead and read. For then shall be great tribulation, uh -huh. such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Go ahead and read. And except those days should be shortened, uh -huh. there should be no flesh save. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. You know, the Lord just let you know here, if he didn't come and do what he's going to do, there would be no flesh left to lack. The world is about to get entangled mm -hmm. in what you may call World War III. Mm -hmm. And now they have the weapons to destroy all of the creation. They didn't have that some years ago. Before the advent of the, uh, uh, the atomic bomb, they didn't have that. When they came up with that, 
That even was a sign of the time that we are living in. Time they, you know, time they had the bow and the arrows and the harpoons and all of that stuff. They would kill all flesh with that. And they came up with the little rifles and all of that. You couldn't kill all flesh with that. But now they got some stuff that can destroy everything. And the Lord said, if he didn't put an end to these days of trouble, there would be no flesh left to lack, because that's exactly what man would do. He'd destroy everything. And they will. Make no mistake about it. You shoot off your, your, your nuclear bomb, I'm going to shoot off man. And he's going to shoot off his, and he's going to shoot off his, and now everything is destroyed. Go ahead, keep reading. I, 20. I had some stuff I started to read you about some armies go ahead but keep reading we'll do that another time read 23 mm -hmm. then if any man shall say unto you lo here is christ go ahead. or there believe it not now he said when this happens if anybody says unto you lo here is christ or there do not believe it go ahead and read on for there shall arise false christ and false prophets uh -huh. and shall show great signs and wonders go ahead. and so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect and well, we read about one and how he was going to show the signs and he was going to even deceive some into taking the mark of the beast. And the Lord done told you what he's going to do to you if you take the mark. But yet, those great signs and wonders that he's going to do, it's going to cause some to even take the mark of the beast. But you're telling me that you don't need know about none of this stuff. That's why you allow somebody to tell you that you don't need to know about. I just need to know, believe on Christ, and I'm going to be saved, okay? You don't even believe on Christ in the first place. Because if you believed on him, then you would believe his doctrine, and you ain't That's getting right. that. That's right. That's right. That's how you believe. I believe on Christ, do you? Mm -hmm. What do you believe? I believe I'm supposed to go to church on Sunday. You don't believe on Well, I believe Jesus died on Good Friday and rose each Sunday morning. You don't believe on Christ. Well, I believe he was born on December 25th. You don't believe on Christ. <laughs> what verse up? 25. Go ahead and read. Behold, I have told you before. Uh huh. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Go ahead. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. Go ahead, me. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Go ahead, me. For wheresoever the caucus is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Uh -huh. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Go ahead. And the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Well, that killed that Son of Man coming before the great tribulation, doesn't it? Right. It said immediately after the tribulation of those days, he's going to come. That's right. Go ahead, keep reading. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. Go ahead. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. Uh -huh. When his branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, ye know that summer is not. Go ahead, me. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. All of these signs that he gave you here, when you see all of these things happen, then know that his coming is near even at the door. And you know, he said he ain't coming until all this stuff happens. Right. Well, we looking at much of this stuff. You know, we ain't waiting on much stuff. We waiting on the temple. That's, that's the main thing. You got the man in place. He ain't got to be born. He already there. You got the resurrected Roman Empire that you're looking at. It's there. You got the earthquakes, the pestilence, and the wars, all of that stuff. You got everybody acting crazy. Just killing each other. All this stuff is in place. These are the days, people. Make no mistake about it. No, it ain't finna happen tomorrow. Or no any day. 
But we are in the days. Make no mistake about it. Go ahead, read on. What verse are we? 34. Go ahead and read. Verily I say unto you, uh -huh. this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Wait a minute. He said a generation that looks at these things, it will not pass until all these things be fulfilled. Well, we're looking at them, aren't we? That's right. So we are the generation that will be around when all of these things come to pass. When we said we're living in the last days, we, we know what we're talking about. Because we are a generation that is witnessing these things. Lord said, watch. I said to all, watch. Go ahead and read on. Heaven and earth shall pass away, uh -huh. but my words shall not pass away. Go ahead and read. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, mm -hmm. no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Go ahead. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. He says, as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Go ahead and read. For as in the days, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Well, Noah preached to the people. Ain't nobody listen. As in the day, you think Noah was not telling these people, right. say, you know, you all better get it together because right. the Lord getting ready to destroy this earth by a flood. But everybody going on, the world just going on mm -hmm. like it's doing today. Here you are, you telling somebody, well, you know, Lord going to come, man. Mm -hmm. And destroy these kingdoms and set up his kingdom. And everybody just going on. Mocking at you. Mm -hmm. Looking at you like you crazy. And the Lord going to come and he's going to take them away just like he did in the days of Noah. What verse are we? 39. Go ahead and read it. And knew not until the f flood came uh -huh. and took them all away. Go ahead. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And they didn't know until the flood came and took them all away. He said, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. We got two other places to go and that's going to be it. Let's go to... Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We're going to pick it up at verse 13. 1 Thessalonians 4. And we're going to begin reading at verse 13 here because what we are about to read here, we're going to just read this little bit about the coming uh, of the Son of Man. But we're going to go on into uh, the next chapter. He says something in there as well, which we almost never read. But we're going to read this first, then we're going to read that. We'll start reading at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And we'll pick it up at... Uh, Verse 13, 4 and 13. Okay, go ahead and read. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Now, uh, uh, you know, Paul here, he's telling you about the coming of the Lord, and he's telling you about some righteous people that are dead here. We know some, and, and, and uh, we may, some of us may even be included in this number. Uh, some of us may fall asleep uh, before the Lord come. But go ahead and read. That ye sorrow not, uh -huh. even as others which have no hope. Go ahead, me. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, uh -huh. even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. Go ahead, me. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. What he's talking about, he's talking about the, uh, the, the, the living righteous and the dead righteous. How he going to raise them and how he going to change of the living righteous. Go ahead, read on though. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. The Lord is going to come down from heaven with a shout. Go ahead, read on. With the voice of the archangel uh -huh. and with the trump of God. You know, as we read in Matthew, Jesus said, great sound of a trumpet, son of man going to come. And, you know, as he had said in his word. Go ahead, read on. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Go ahead, read. Then we which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds Go ahead. to meet the Lord in the air. Uh -huh. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now I want to go on into chapter 5 and pick it up at verse 1 because this is the one I wanted to get to anyway. Go ahead and read on. But I wanted to read into it right. so you'll understand what time we are reading about here. Right. You know, reading about the coming of the Lord. Now he's going to tell the people, you know, how they really should be conducting themselves in order to be ready right. for the coming of the Lord. Start reading that verse 1. Go ahead and read it. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. And I can say the same thing of the times and seasons. You 
that's got some understanding, as Paul is saying to these Thessalonians, you ain't got no need that I write unto you. Go ahead, read on. For yourselves know perfectly uh -huh. that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. He said, for yourself, you know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Go ahead and read on. For when they shall say peace uh -huh. and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them. Well, that's what they're saying now. They peace and safety. And then they got the Pope, which I had an article. It's an old article. But where the European common market, the one that he's going to head up, they wanted him to lead a peace movement. They asked him to lead it. And then I can remember another article that I had, still got it somewhere, where one of the top rabbis over in Israel said that he felt that the Pope was the only one that could bring peace to the Middle East. And that is his message, peace mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. But when you read about it, which I had in this lesson but left it out, in the eighth chapter of day, he said, by peace, he's going to destroy many. That's right. Go ahead, read on. Then sudden destruction come up, cometh upon them. See what it said when they said peace and safety. Then sudden destruction cometh up on them. Go ahead, read on. As travail upon a woman with child, uh -huh. and they shall not escape. Go ahead, read. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. I can say this to you. Ye, brethren, are not in darkness. If you was... When you got here, you shouldn't be now. Mm -hmm. But if you've been around a while, you weren't in darkness anyway. He said, but ye, brother, you're not in darkness, that it should overtake you as a thief. It's going to overtake the world as a thief. That's right. This thing going to hit up on this earth, and the one don't know, they're going to say, what's happening? That's right. You're... You remember that man that was running around here talking about the Lord's going to come and there's going to be a great tribulation and a man going to move in some temple mm -hmm. and declare himself God. Well, that's what's happening. Right, right. But for you that know, it will not overtake you as a thief, but for the world, it's going to overtake them as a thief, people. Go ahead, read on. What verse are we? Verse 5. Read it. Ye are all the children of light uh -huh. and the children of the day. Go ahead. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. He said, now you are all of the children of the light and the children of the day. You know what the light is? That means you got some knowledge, some understanding. And you're not of the children of the night. You are not one that's walking around in darkness. Right. Those that don't have understanding, they are the ones that's walking around in darkness. But you're children of the day. You're children of the light. Go ahead. Key read. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, uh -huh. but let us watch and be sober. See what I said? Therefore, don't let us sleep as others. Where are the sleep? Right. And when you try to wake them up, they tell you something wrong with you. Therefore, it said, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. You know what's over here? So that means you have a sound man. That's right. And when you got the word of God, understanding of the word of God, you have a sound man, and when you ain't got it, you're drunk. Keep reading. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. Go ahead. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Go ahead, read. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. See what I said? Putting on the breastplate of faith and love. In other words, you got to believe in this thing. That's right. Don't let nobody take this away from you people. Right. I don't care how crazy they say you are. You got it right. You know, I know you got it right. You got it right because you're reading it right out your book. That's how you got it right. That's yes. right. That's right. Believe what you read. It ain't failed. Mm -hmm. When else the word of God fail? You tell one time. When did it fail? One time. Well, why you can't believe on something that ain't never failed? That other stuff you believe on, it fails you all the time. I believe this. Mm -hmm. One later, it's done failed. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe this. A year later, it's done failed. But the word of God ain't never failed, and it ain't going to fail. The Lord said it ain't. And it ain't. Whatever he calls, that's what's going to be. That's right. Get up for it. Be children of the light. And not children of the darkness. Go ahead, keep reading. 
For God have appointed us to wrath, but to obtain. Wait a minute, no, no. He ain't appointed us to no wrath. You better read that right. For God have not appointed Thank us. You. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's a big difference. Yeah, ain't, ain't it a big difference? Big difference. <laughs> he said, God have not appointed us to wrath. Go ahead, read on. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we waiting on. That's right. We waiting on our salvation, people. That's what he's coming with. And he let you know that his coming is near. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I hope you learned something. Excellent lesson. Excellent lesson. Our Father which art in heaven. Our fathers which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread. Give this day of our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts. And forgive us of our debts. As we forgive our debt to us. As we forgive our debt to us. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power and the glory and the glory forever. Forever. In Jesus' holy name we pray. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise Amen. the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.